Welcome to my new calculus channel once again. My name is John Gabriel. And in my previous video, uh, which is very important, I covered how we got arithmetic from geometry. But there are some things that I still wanted to go over and uh, just summarize everything in that video. So let's begin. Now, this was the video that I published uh, just, I think, uh, yesterday, I think it was or two days ago and uh, there this video is a combination of the details of previous videos like this one here geometric arithmetic versus arithmetic versus, versus algebraic arithmetic and also complete theory of arithmetic from similar triangles book 5 proposition 2 there are about 15 uh, different videos on this topic okay so uh, we know that, let's just go over the, the basics quickly, we know that requirement 2 is a primitive form of difference and addition. So that means uh, by, you know, extending a line, uh, it's, it's identical to adding or summation and by, dim and by diminishing, it's uh, taking the difference or uh, subtraction. So requirement 3 derives a circle. Uh, which is a very important object uh, from which all the other geometric objects of high complexity are derived, like triangles, squares, polygons, etc. And then book 5 and book 6 introduce similar triangles and how ratios and proportion are re realized from the same. Now, book 6 should have come before book 5, uh, but it didn't. But that's not a problem because uh, if one studies them in context, it's very easy to see the the very strong links between the two. And then uh, Book 5, Proposition 12, is a found foundation of all arithmetic operations involving magnitudes. And any magnitude has to be identified by another magnitude. So you can't talk about a given magnitude unless you're comparing it to another magnitude. Usually you compare that magnitude as an antecedent to another magnitude as a consequent. And that's how you identify the antecedent, because you know the consequent. And the consequent acts like a unit does. All right? So um, this, for example, here is a ratio. And the, the magnitude before the colon is the antecedent. And the magnitude after the colon is a consequent, or just PQ if you're using letters. And in geometry, you can perform all the four basic operations exactly and I'll show you in a minute what that means, uh, although I have done so in the past. And this is very different to algebra, where we do not have a measure for most ratios of magnitudes. And I'll give you an example of that too. So a number is the result of the generalization of arithmetic through the abstract unit whose size is irrelevant in algebra, since all the properties of geome geometric arithmetic are transferred intact. Okay? So let's go to our... Uh, applet and see what's happening here. So what I've, what I've done here is uh, the, the, I'm representing the ratios uh, with these blue and red colored lines. Okay, so this ratio here, this blue one, as I've said in the previous video, is one third and this is two halves or, or the same as one, okay? And, and then I've, I've constructed parallel lines to the blue uh, a parallel li and a parallel line to the red. And uh, so, so for example, if I wanted to add something like pi, well, not pi, but something that has a measure that one thinks of as pi. So this is, let's say this blue line is, uh, actually, that should be on one. Okay, so let's say this blue line is roughly the measure of pi, right? Not the measure, but the representation or, or the way pi is realized. And we wanted to add 1 to it. Okay, so we wanted to add, we want to add 1 to it. Now in geometry, we can do that exactly, and it's given by the length of this. It's given by the length of this orange dotted line and this orange dotted line. And these are just approximate measures. So this here would be the exact measure of the sum of pi, uh, pi ratio plus ratio one to one okay so it would be uh, the sum of this ratio and this ratio now i've drawn the parallel line 
segments as well so that you can see that these ratios are actually in proportion. This ratio is in proportion to this one, and this one is in proportion to this one. And of course, the sum is just the uh, concatenation of these two line segments, and the quotient is just the ratio of these line segments, given like this, okay? So say, for example, you had 4 divided by 2, right? 4 divided by 2, and did I put those on there exactly? 4 divided by 2, like that, okay? Then, if I position these like so, anywhere along there, it doesn't matter. So, you see 4, uh, uh, four and 1 are, are in proportion to 12 and 3, right? Okay, 4 and 1. 4 and 1 are in proportion to 12 and 3, and 2 and 1 are in proportion to 6 and 3, right? And, of course, the sum is just the concatenation. The quotient is just this orange dotted line by this dotted line. The product is a little more complicated, but I'll show you in a minute uh, what the product is. So if we go to the product, which is this uh, this box here, Okay, so the product, what we do is we take one of the lines and we invert the antecedent with a consequent because uh, multiplication is a reciprocal measure of uh, division or the quotient. And so what we're doing here is we're saying that if we want to multiply these two, right, which is um, uh, 8, then we have to we have to, uh, let's just do this here so we can see the result clearly. Remember, we've got to put them on the same point so they have the same consequent. So when we multiply these now, the result is 8 or 10 over 1.25. But all we've done is we've taken this blue line, which I've d drawn dotted instead of solid just to make it clearer. I convert it into the magenta dotted line and I take another parallel line to it, which is this magenta line. And so now... I'm able to simply take the quotient, I mean, the yes, the quotient, because multiplication is found in terms of a quotient of 10 to 1.25, and that gives us 8. So, as you can see, um, this is a very powerful app, app that I've modified it since the previous video. Uh, I would suggest you download it. I'll place a link inside. And uh, also, you can go through these instructions here, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write them in the comment section. This is the most important uh, uh, video where the basics or the foundations of arithmetic and algebra are concerned. Okay, so this is solid, well-formed ar arithmetic. It's not garbage like set theory or the zermelo frankel axioms or the garbage that you find in any mainstream mathematics course at university, okay, this is based on sound geometry. And this is how, for example, you know how to work with fractions. So, you know, when, when, when you learned about fractions, so let's just make this a little smaller here. When you learned about fractions, you didn't, it's not as if, somebody woke up one morning and decided, ah, um, that if we're going to add two fractions, that, just let me do this properly here. Okay, this is there. Okay, somebody didn't, what am I doing here now? Yeah, that's the sum. Somebody didn't just decide that we're going to take a common denominator here and, and, uh, and then see how much each of them goes into the uh, denominator as a, and of course, this general operation that you see up at the top here. So, uh, we, this isn't a rule, it's a fact of geometry, just the same way as a quotient is a fact of geometry and a product, okay? And of course, a difference and a sum, because difference is the most primitive operation. So, to summarize, all we do is we take the uh, these blue and red lines as the ratios whose measure we are. Uh, concerned with, right? And that's what algebra is all about. It doesn't worry anymore about the consequent. 
In other words, the consequent becomes the unit and uh, all ratios in algebra are equal, not equivalent only, they're equal. Uh, they're not only in proportion, they're equal. In geometry, uh, these two ratios here, for example, uh, 2, 2 and 3, 3, uh, they're in proportion, but they're not equal because the antecedents, as you see here, 2 and 3 are not equal, okay? Uh, so it's the same as saying, is, um, is a half equal to 2 quarters, right? Is it? In algebra, it is. A half is equal to 2 quarters in algebra. But it's not equal to... In... in uh, in geometry, they're not equal. This is 2 and this is 1.5, right? Okay, so let's just move this along here like that. Okay, so always uh, these lines are going to be in proportion to the ones with the parallel decoration on them. And then when we find the, intercept, the meeting point on the x-axis, we know that this turns out to be the consequent. Okay, so I hope I've made that perfectly clear. Um, the best way to understand all this stuff is to download the applet and play with it because the applet teaches you everything, okay? And if you really want to understand arithmetic and mathematics from the foundations, this is the way to do it. Not through counting little stones like that idiot George Cantor introduced set theory. Um, that's very primitive. Even animals can uh, uh, count in that uh, particular way. For example, they can recognize uh, groups of different objects. So you could teach a chimpanzee the difference between uh, 3 and 4 and 12 and 10 and stuff like that. But this is real mathematics. This is not primitive uh, garbage like you find in mainstream mathematics. So uh, that's all I have to say. If you're not ready, uh, subscriber, become one. Um, spread the news of this channel and uh, I hope to chat to you, with you again soon about another interesting topic but before I sign off I read something really really ridiculous in Scientific American about the Langlands, Langlands uh, uh, theory which is utter garbage and unfortunately um, somebody won a Nobel Prize uh, and I think it was Langlands, I'm not sure, but anyway, the, 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 the apes in the Church of Academia keep rewarding themselves uh, with uh, mathematics prizes for the garbage that they produce, the utter and complete and worthless garbage. Uh, I mean, I've never heard something as ridiculous as the unified theory of mathematics. It just gets more and more absurd by the day. And these apes have hijacked mathematics. None of them are mathematicians. They're morons and retards. So um, I'm giving you the nitty-gritty and the truth. And my new calculus is the first rigorous formulation in human history. And I am the greatest mathematician today. Nobody knows and understands mathematics as well as I do. That's not arrogance. It's just a fact, okay? And uh, uh, I urge you to prove my claims. Don't just believe me. Go to academia where there are a lot of over 64 articles, 65 articles, and my free ebook. Download them, study them. If you have any questions, you can send me an email, which is available on my official new calculus page, and I'll try to get around to answering them. So remember, I'm a believer in well-formed concepts, just like the ancient Greeks. I reject infinity in its, entire, in, in its entirety. It is utter and complete garbage, um, which only leads to paradoxes and has no... It, 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 eventually it reaches a stage where it becomes so complex it's unusable. Well, that's pretty much it. I only have 15 minutes. And till next time, my name is John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Goodbye.